While attending the Tapper and ARRL Digital Communications Conference last month in Austin, Texas, I decided to make a little purchase. I bought the DV3000 breakout board from Northwest Digital Radio. I had the opportunity to buy one two or three times earlier, but I always hesitated. I was reluctant to make that purchase. I knew that the board was actually designed for the software and hardware production teams that were developing the UDRX digital radio. The DB3000 plugs into the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi does Linux. And well, let's face it, I don't do Linux. So can a Linux challenged ham radio operator put these things together and make it work? Stick around and we'll find out. Although the newer IRC DDB gateway system doesn't actually require that you register your amateur radio call sign, the older ICOM G2 system does. As you're using DSTAR, you never know for sure when your signal might cross over into the G2 system. If your call sign isn't registered, you're going to be bumped out. To avoid confusion, it's a good idea that you register your call sign. You'll probably be able to do this online, and it's best if you do it with a local group. You could try this web address here. Insert the call sign of a local DSTAR repeater in your area, and then dot dstargateway.org, and see if a page comes up. If page doesn't, you might check with your local amateur radio club, or the people who manage the DSTAR repeaters near you, and they should be able to assist you in finding someone who can help you register your call sign. This is a good website if you're located in the Pacific Northwest. If all else fails for you, you could try this one as well. We'll click here where it says registration. Then down here where it says new user, click register. Here you'll enter your call sign, your name, Put in an email address so they can send a message back to you to let you know that the registration is completed. And then put in a password so that you can come back and use this again. Don't forget, you'll need to agree right here. When you receive your notification, you may be asked to go back, sign on again, and fill in some additional information about your station and your location. It's important that you do that as well. Now let's look at the hardware you'll need for this project. Of course, you'll want to have a Raspberry Pi. This is a Model B, and when I got the Raspberry Pi, I bought one of these nifty little laser cut cases to go with it. That's kind of a rainbow colored thing. I'm not going to be able to put the DV3000 onto the Raspberry Pi if I have this case on here. I'll take a few of the top layers off. That gives me room to put this on right in here like this. Of course you'll want to have a keyboard. Just scrounge around in your closet or find it in your junk bin. This is an old keyboard here from some compact computer. The key thing is that it has a USB plug. That USB plug will be needed to hook it up to the Raspberry Pi. And when you're scrounging around in those boxes looking for that keyboard, see if you can't find a USB mouse as well. A good old-fashioned wired mouse like this will work pretty good on a Raspberry Pi. So what about a monitor? There are two monitor ports on a Raspberry Pi. One is HDMI, which of course lets you hook up to an HDMI monitor. But you can also get an adapter cable that allows you to use the same port to hook up to either DVI or a VGA. There's even a composite port with its own RCA jack right on the board. Our Model B Raspberry Pi here has only two USB jacks on it. The B Plus has four. 
But in either case, with all the equipment that we're going to hook up to the Raspberry Pi, we can't expect there to be an adequate amount of power coming through this board out these USB ports. So it's a good idea to purchase a USB hub, a powered USB hub. I got this one from Amazon. They're putting out things with their own name now, Amazon Basics. It's got seven USB jacks on it. Five in the back are regular ones. Two in the front carry high power. They can carry the current that's needed to run the Raspberry Pi and some of the other peripherals that we'll be adding to the project. So this is important. There's a place here to hook our five bolts into the wall ward that comes with this. Take a look at Amazon's website and you can see where you could order one of these. You could find powered hubs at various prices. I thought this was a pretty good price considering what you were getting here. It can be laid sideways or up and down. Comes with its own wall wart and all the cables we need to hook it up to the Raspberry Pi and of course the other devices will have their own USB cables. It's all packaged nice in a box. It'll come right to your door. In addition to the power USB hub, you'll probably want to order one of these small USB dongle sound cards. I got this one off of Amazon for less than five dollars. It's got two little jacks on the bottom where you can plug in a microphone and earphones and it works quite well with the Raspberry Pi. Here's the same little USB sound card on the Amazon site. As you can see, got some buttons there, allows you to manipulate it. These jacks are real easy to work. I mentioned that you could hook up the earphones to this thing. You can also take the audio out of this, run it through a simple amplifier that you might have kicking around from earlier computers uh, so that you can run the audio out through speakers. That works quite well. It's a simple little device, and it's certainly not very expensive. You'll also want to find a microphone. I found this one in the junk box when I was looking for keyboards on the mouse. It's just off of an old computer. My preferred microphone is connected to my earphone headset. This is the same microphone that I use when I make my YouTube videos. While you're shopping on Amazon, you might want to pick up one of these USB extension cords as well, especially when you go to hook up the sound card. It takes up a lot of extra space, and there's not room to put other uh, USB plugs in next to it. It'll plug right in here quite easily. Everything fits nice and tidy. Don't forget you'll also need a little SD card. Here's a 32 gigabyte SD card that plugs right into the Raspberry Pi. That's a lot of memory. It's more than adequate for our project. It slides right in here and we'll be ready to go. An optional item that you might like to have is one of these little tiny Wi-Fi dongles so that you could run your Raspberry Pi on Wi-Fi instead of uh, hooking it straight up to your local LAN. I found this one on eBay too. And don't forget the DV3000 itself. You can order it from nwdigitalradio.com. And allow me to insert a little disclaimer right here. Northwest Digital Radio is not responsible for this video in any way, shape, or form. They're not responsible for any of the information, or maybe the misinformation, that I present here. I'm not associated with Northwest Digital Radio. I do like their coasters, though. Here's a quick review of the hardware we'll need for this project. Here's a list. We'll need a Raspberry Pi, an SD card, the DB3000 breakout board, you'll want a monitor, a USB keyboard, a USB mouse, don't forget a powered USB hub, a microphone, headphones or speakers and an amp, a USB sound card, and if you choose, a USB Wi-Fi dongle. 
In the next video in this series, we'll put our image on the SD card and tackle that Linux stuff. I hope you'll join me there soon. And hey, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share.